Mean Gene Okerlund is just as legendary as some of the men he interviewed during his career as a TV host. He was, and still is, a cornerstone of old school wrestling, having worked in the WWF during the boom period of professional wrestling, and also leaving his own mark in WCW during the Monday Night Wars. While today's backstage correspondents in wrestling don't show any character at all, fans who grew up in the 80s will fondly remember Mean Gene's own unique interview style. And we will also remember keeping a close eye on Gene in case he started giggling to himself on TV. Gene really could be just as entertaining as his interview subjects. While the man had his own vices as he grew older, no one really says a bad thing about Mean Gene Okerlund. We knew he enjoyed a few cocktails, this wasn't news to anyone, but it wasn't until after he passed away that we learned the true extent of his main vice. This video looks at the life and career of Mean Gene Okerlund. Eugene Arthur Okerlund was born on December 19, 1942 in Brooking, South Dakota. He was a wrestling fan growing up, saying that he and his friends would grab a six pack and go to the wrestling matches at the National Guard Armory. He took an interest in the interview segments of wrestling shows and how these interviews furthered storylines and character development. He was also captivated by the whole production and broadcasting side of pro wrestling, which eventually led him to becoming a radio DJ at KOIL, a radio station in Omaha, Nebraska. He then travelled to Minneapolis to work for the WDGY station under the name Gene Leader. It was also around this time that he fronted his own band, Gene Carroll and the Shades, even releasing a single and an album. In Minneapolis, Gene Okerlund became friends with Al Darusha, a producer for the AWA. This led to Darusha recommending Gene Okerlund to Vern Gagne and, in turn, led to Gene's first full-time announcing job with the AWA. Gene's background in radio seriously helped him in more ways than one. Not only did he have a distinctive voice that was made for broadcast, he was also able to think on his feet and roll with the punches. In the AWA, if his interview subject would forget lines or get lost, he could pick up the interview for them and make things continue, either in a professional way or in a way that would make us laugh. He never backed down from superstars who would talk bad to him either. He always gave as good as he got. Some of Gene's early work in the AWA was really good, interviewing guys like Bobby Heenan, Mad Dog Vachon, Andre the Giant and Pat Patterson. It was also in the AWA where Mean Gene first interviewed Hulk Hogan, a man whose line, let me tell you something Mean Gene, would become famous worldwide. Hogan admits that his promo skills were seriously lagging during this time period and he would let Mean Gene totally lead the interview segments and give him direction. When we think of what Hogan would become on the mic, we have Gene Okerlund to thank for that. It was also during his AWA days that Gene Okerlund was given the nickname Mean Gene by Jesse the Body Ventura during an interview segment. It was Hulk Hogan though that ran with that name for years to come. Hogan and Gene became good friends and when the Hulkster left the AWA to begin running wild in the WWF, he recommended Gene to Vince McMahon. The timing couldn't have been better either, as the WWF was on the brink of a huge boom period and Gene would soon have the opportunity to broadcast to a much larger audience. It's mainly Gene's run during the 80s that most people remember him for. He was, in a word, excellent. Gene Okerlund very much became part of the act, as he would play into a superstar's character during interviews. He followed the storylines, he watched the matches, he knew what worked and what didn't. It truly is incredible when we look at Gene Okerlund's backstage interviews in comparison to today's backstage interviews. Of course, wrestling evolves and times change, and also, today's backstage broadcasters are told what to do and what to say, but Gene Okerlund had the ability to add his own personality to these segments that done nothing but elevate his backstage interviews. He could be just as entertaining as the superstars, whether he was dressing down the recent actions of a villain or celebrating a victory with a babyface. 
Gene was also a huge part of the rock and wrestling connection during the 80s, finding himself interviewing celebrities and musicians on both WWF programming and on MTV. This all led to the first ever WrestleMania, where Gene Okerlund sang the national anthem due to a celebrity no-show. Mean Gene went on to become an integral part of the WWF during its early success. WrestleMania after WrestleMania, show after show and year after year, you can't go back and view this era of wrestling without seeing Mean Gene Okerlund. He became a huge part of the company, making everything that little bit more entertaining as he put his own spin on backstage interviews. Towards the end of this WWF run, Gene admits that he was getting restless, and he also admits that he didn't feel challenged anymore within the WWF. On top of this, Gene said that although he probably could have renegotiated a new contract with the WWF, he was never offered one. There's no doubt that Okerlund grew as a performer in his own right in the WWF, but he felt it was time to move on, and on the November 6th, 1993 edition of WCW Saturday Night, he debuted for World Championship Wrestling. It was much more than the WWE just losing a broadcaster. He was an integral part of the backstage team and one of the boys. The signing of Mean Gene Okerlund to WCW was just as big as many of the in-ring superstars that would sign with Ted Turner. Gene freely admits that early on, moving to WCW was the best thing he could have done. Eventually, he was able to interview some of his favourite superstars once again, from Macho Man Randy Savage to Hulk Hogan, and he also became a part of WCW's most historic moments, including the birth of the New World Order. Just like when he signed with the WWF, Gene's timing couldn't have been better, as he was with WCW as it became the number one wrestling company in the world. Mean Gene's contributions, both behind and in front of the camera, shouldn't go unnoticed. He, of course, took over the WCW hotline, something that was promoted heavily on the air. Gene revealed that the hotline made WCW $3 million a year. Okerlund had an 8 year run with WCW, seeing the highs and lows the company went through over the years. He liked Eric Bischoff, but he wasn't so sure at times that Eric knew what he was doing. Things of course got out of control in WCW. Gene Okerlund was not getting run sheets or formats before shows. He was given no direction whatsoever for interviews. Vince Russo came in, which Gene said only added to the problems. And basically, the inmates were running the asylum. In his words, the tail was wagging the dog. Mean Gene Okerlund found his way back to the WWE at WrestleMania 17. After coming out to a great ovation, Mean Gene and Bobby Heenan were reunited as they took to the commentary desk to call the gimmick Battle Royal, featuring a bunch of legends from wrestling's past. You could tell that Gene and Bobby had a great time calling the match, with their commentary being just as entertaining as the match itself, if not more so. Gene would go on to host shows for the WWE and make odd appearances on live TV. Fans will fondly remember the Confidential series that peeled the curtain back a little on the WWE and their superstars. In 2006, Hulk Hogan inducted Mean Gene into the Hall of Fame, making Gene Okerlund the very first announcer to ever get an induction. From here, Gene would continue to host WWE shows and make more special appearances. One of the first original WWE Network shows, Legends House, featured Gene Okerlund and other stars of wrestling's past living under one roof. Legends House showed that Mean Gene hadn't missed a step. He was very funny on the show and for me personally, he was a reason to slog through the episodes. Gene also hosted other WWE Network shows, showing audiences that he still had a lot to give to the company. On January 2nd, 2019, Eugene Arthur Okerlund passed away after suffering a bad fall. Gene's son, Todd Okerlund, revealed that Gene had three kidney transplants due to a lifestyle of heavy drinking. This played a huge part in Gene's health getting gradually worse in the weeks leading up to his passing. 
The WWE and Hulk Hogan gave Mean Gene a memorable tribute and send-off on Monday Night Raw. Mean Gene's contributions to wrestling will forever stand the test of time. No one will ever be able to step forward and become the next Mean Gene Oberland. He truly was one of a kind, in a business where the role of announcer and broadcaster has now become repetitive and standard. He was the voice of wrestling during times when the business saw incredible growth, and for this reason he should never be forgotten. <laughs>